Hi, I'm Carolyn Weaver from Body and Soul Companion, and you are on week 12 of the Spiritual Exercises of Ignatius. And we are going through Jesus's family history. And if you are following this according to the liturgical year, you are on the first week of Advent. I've I've scheduled everything according to the liturgical year. So when we get to um, at the end of Jesus's life, when we get to the Passion Week, the Holy Week, you'll be right at Holy Week in the actual calendar year that you're in. That's only if you're following it. You don't have to follow the liturgical year. But right now we're on the first week of Advent. So I have the first Advent candle um, burning. And uh, if you, sometime during this time, you'll also, if you'd like, you can do a Jesse tree where you put these um, things, these different symbols of Jesus's family history on, uh, on a Jesse tree, a tree. And I explained that in the first day of week 12, if you want more information on that. But I have gone what I've done is gone here on the screen. You can see that we are on day three of week 12. And this also um, in the Jesse tree, it's day three. So we are in the story of Noah and the ark. So this says Genesis 6, 5 through 8, 22. But in my actual manual, it's um, Genesis 6, 5 through 9, 17. This is the kids version, what you would read to your kids. And, and the reason why I'm putting this on is there, there's links to all of this. If you want to combine what, if you have kids, what you're doing with your kids during this Advent season with what you're doing in the spiritual exercises, then you don't have to kill two birds with one stone. You just, oh, you get to, you do get to kill two birds with one stone. That sounds really bad, killing two birds with one stone. But it's just, you can line up your spiritual exercise meditations with what you're doing with your kids. So this is my blog where I go through it. And there's also a handout that I have, but um, this is for you, background. You don't need to read that, the background in Genesis. But the first part is, is um, what you would... Um, talk about with your kids. Play a game called Name the Animal. One person imitates an animal and the rest of the family tries to guess what it is. And then deeper discussions about Noah and what, how that relates to the scarlet thread of redemption. And that's what we're doing. Jesus's family history is the scarlet thread of redemption. So I, this is a very long passage if you read from 6.5 to 9.17. So I'm not going to read it in this video. So if you want to turn off the video and read that, you are more than welcome to. You, you don't even have to listen to any more. And again, this week, a lot of the readings are really long. So you won't necessarily, you could do an imaginative contemplation for Noah, just reading through the whole thing and imagining yourself, Noah, having God say, build an ark and all of that. Um, but it's too long for me to do in a, in a setting, to, a guidance setting. So, but what I do have, because here it says, here is an audio of me telling this story in a summary form, flood. So we're going to go to Noah's flood. And there you are. And I have all these in a Dropbox. And so we ourselves are going to do a little imaginative contemplation as we listen to a very short version, story version, a three minute story version of Noah and the flood and the ark. So I am going to turn it on and we are going to listen. But before we do that, let's enter into God's presence. So I invite you to breathe slowly and to recenter your scattered senses on the presence of God.
relaxing in his presence, your physical body, and also relaxing your mind. Every tension and preoccupation melt away as you gaze at God. He's here and he sees you and he knows you and he loves you. Receive his loving gaze on you. Lord, we pray that more of our day would be directed to your service and praise. And we seek the grace to understand your perfect plan from creation to Christ's incarnation. Number one of Adam's sons was named Seth, and one of Seth's descendants was a man named Noah, which means comfort, because his parents said, he will comfort us in the labor and painful toil of our hands, because the earth was cursed by the Lord. At that time, there were many men and women living on the earth, and they were doing things not pleasing to God. God saw their wickedness and that their hearts were filled with evil thoughts. Because of their great wickedness, God was going to destroy all people that he had created and all the animals and birds from the face of the earth. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord, for he was a righteous man and blameless among the people of his day. It was said that Noah walked with God. Noah had a wife and three sons, Jepheth, Shem, and Ham. So God said to Noah, I am going to put an end to all people, for the earth is filled with violence and their wickedness. So make yourself an ark or a boat of wood with rooms inside it. Seal it with pitch or tar inside and out. God also said, I am going to bring floodwaters on the earth to destroy all life. Everything on earth with the breath of life will perish. But I will establish my covenant with you, and you will enter the ark with your wife and your sons and your sons' wives. You are to bring into the ark two of every kind of creature, a male and a female of all animals, and every kind of food for them and for your family. Noah did everything God commanded him. Then the Lord said, go into the ark and take your whole family because I have found you righteous among all the people. Seven days from now, I will send rain upon the earth. So Noah took his wife and his sons, Jepheth, Shem, and Ham, and his son's wives, eight in all, and entered the ark along with all the animals. Then the Lord closed the door. It happened as the Lord said. It began to rain for 40 days and nights. The heavens burst open and everything living, every living thing with the breath of life perished except those safe with Noah inside the ark. The water continued a long time until God remembered Noah and sent a wind over the earth to dry the waters. One day, Noah sent out a raven to see if the earth was dry. Again, he sent out a dove, which brought back a leaf in its beak. Then Noah knew the earth was dry at last. God said to Noah, come out of the ark, you and your wife, your sons, and your sons' wives. Bring out all the animals. Noah built an altar to the Lord and offered a thanksgiving sacrifice. God was pleased and promised never again to destroy the earth by water. Then God blessed Noah and his sons, saying to them, have many children and replenish the earth. Everything that lives and moves will now be food for you, but you must not eat meat that still has lifeblood in it. And God placed the rainbow in the sky as a sign of God's covenant with man. Whenever the rainbow appears in the clouds, people will remember God's covenant with Noah, never to destroy the earth again by water. So I, I invite you to just sit with your eyes closed.
just think on that first reading. And I'm going to take you through an imaginative contemplation of this story, the shorter version of this story, what I just read. So imagine men and women living on the earth. Imagine yourself as Noah or his wife or his sons, but imagine looking around at the men and li women living on the earth and them doing things, evil things that were not pleasing to God. Just imagine that. Imagine yourself as Noah or one of his family. imagine what it would have been like to maybe live in a town where everything around you was wicked. How would that have felt? And then imagine saying, I'm God saying, I'm going to destroy all people that I have created and all the animals and birds from the face of the earth. Oh, recalling back to the creation story and how everything he made was good. But then the fall and evil coming into the world. And then imagine Noah. If you're Noah, Imagine God finding favor or giving favor to you because you are righteous and blameless among all these evil people of the day. Imagine Noah or yourself, if you're Noah, walking with God. What would that look like? to walk with God. So you're either an observer in Noah's family or Noah, and you hear God's voice say, I am going to put an end to all people for the earth is filled with violence and their wickedness. So, Noah, make yourself a boat of wood with rooms inside it. Seal it with pitch inside and out. Because I am going to bring floodwaters on the earth to destroy all life. Everything on earth with the breath of life will perish. But I will establish my covenant with you. And you will enter the ark with your wife and your three sons <clears throat> and your son's wives. You are to bring into the ark a male and female of every kind of creature and food for the creatures and your family. So imagine how Noah felt that big assignment. What would that have felt like? How do you feel? Anxious, fearful, panicky? But Noah did everything just as God commanded him. So imagine the ark being built The wood, just 
Take some time to imagine that arc being built. And the animals being gathered. Turn off the video if you need more time to imagine that. You have all the time in the world. Imagine the people and what they must have thought. With that big arc being built. Noah did all, everything, just as God commanded him. And then hear the Lord say, go into the ark and take your whole family because I have found you righteous among all the people. Seven days from now, I will send rain upon the earth. So imagine Noah, if you're Noah, take your wife. If you're the wife, go with Noah. Or if you're the sons, go with Noah or the sons' wives. Eight of you going into the ark with all the animals. Then the Lord closes the door. What do you see? What do you hear? What do you smell? What does the food taste like for your family? And then imagine pitter patter of rain getting louder and louder and louder. Patting patter of rain. And imagine being in that ark with the smells and the sounds and the sound of the rain falling down. Imagine that for 40 days and 40 nights. And then the floods coming because of the incessant rain and feel the boat lift up off the land and begin to float. On the water. And imagine the people That's a sad thing. The perishing people. And then God, even though the waters have been on the sea for many, many days and feel a wind over the earth that dries the waters begins to dry. And then see the raven going out to see if the earth is dry and coming back. And the dove who comes back and see the leaf in his beak knowing that the earth was dry. See those flying raven and flying dove. And hear God say, come out of the ark, you and your wife, your sons and your son's wife, and bring wives and bring all the animals. Um, and then see them come out into the dry land. And if you're Noah, 
or you're watching Noah see the ark being built. And a thanksgiving sacrifice. Again, a sacrifice of blood being put on the altar before the Lord. And then feel God's pleasure and promise to never again destroy the earth by water. And feel God bless Noah and his sons and hear him say, have many children and replenish the earth. Everything that lives and moves will now be food for you, including the animals. But you must not eat meat that still has life blood in it. And then look up and see the rainbow in the sky. That's a sign of God's covenant with mankind. Whenever the rainbow appears in the clouds, people will remember God's covenant with Noah never to destroy the earth again by water. I invite you to sit with that contemplation and have a conversation with God. Face to face, take your candle, move about. Maybe you'll see a rainbow. But just talk to God about what he wants you to know. Ask him what he wants you to know from that story about himself, two-way conversation, and I'll close. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Be blessed.